guys, so today I am going to be showing you my 2021 planner lineup. Now, sorry if you can hear the fan in the background, it's really, really hot and I cannot turn that thing off otherwise I'll be sweating buckets in this room. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show you the planners that I'm going to be using for this year. Now, it is January the 7th. Um, I had been waiting on one of the planners to arrive because, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, the Shirley Post sucks. <laughs> Um, and it took forever to get here. So I am going to start with the smallest planners and then work my way back. So let's start with this one. I will just try and set these aside. Okay. So this is my, uh, I never know how to pronounce the name of this journal, but does it look, look strong? It's this brand here, Lokstrom 1917. So I went with the berry color and this is in the A5 dotted um, like dot pages. And I use this for my reading journal. So I will show you, I have set up a little bit. I haven't finished this page yet, but I've started it. That's my title page. Um, I've got my Goodreads challenge. So I think I challenged myself this year to read, let me have a look. I do have Goodreads open on my thing. Now I put a hundred books here because if I reach a hundred books, that's amazing. But my actual goal though on Goodreads is less than that. Um, I just wanted to do like a neat even hundred books on there, but my goal for this year is to read 40 books. Um, so if I go over 40, then that's amazing. That's why I did that. Then I wrote, uh, drew this out. I actually found this on Pinterest and I really liked the, like the drawing. So I drew this into my um bullet journal and it just says there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you and that one is by Maya Angelou um so there's that and then every time I finish reading a book this year it'll get marked off and then I have a little key down here of the types of books that I read so I've got like cozy mystery chiclet thriller slash you know true stories fantasy and romance um, so that's kind of a key for me to do that. And then here I decided I wanted to do a series tracker. Um, so I drew this out. I actually saw uh, someone on Pinterest do it this way and I thought that was a good idea. Um, I was testing out some watercolor markers that I got for Christmas and some of the dark colors do bleed on this paper. This paper is quite thin so um, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but these are not all of the series I started, but these are the series that I'm mainly focusing on this year that I want to get more red in. Um, so I currently have 21 series on, um, here and then I've left this page blank. So that way, if I end up starting more series throughout the year, which I most likely will, I can add them into the spot. And you can see what I mean about the darker colors of my watercolored markers do bleed through the page. Then there's this one here. This is just my January cover page. It's not the greatest, but it is what it is. Um, these dark colors did bleed through quite bad on the other side. So I ended up gluing, um, gluing two pages together to cover that up. Um, I was just testing things out to see like whether what I could use in this, in this book. Um, and then we go into January uh, monthly view. So this is how I set up my monthly. I do like a prop up full two page monthly. And then I have a Sunday start on my calendar. And I do not half a square and put 24 and 31 in there. That is not happening in this planner. If there are more days um, that are too many days to fit down the bottom here, they go at the top. 
I know that might not make sense to other people, but this is how I've been doing it for years. It makes sense to me. I will not have a box split in half for two different days. It drives me nuts. I hate when planners do that, especially Happy Planner, because I know they do it. <laughs> so not in this book, but this is um, my birthday month. So my birthday is actually on the 24th of January. I am turning 32 this year. And pink is my favorite color. So I kind of picked this theme and it works for me. And then in each day I have a color code for things that are happening in that day. So for instance, the, the sort of pinky color here is for work. Uh, the lilac is for days off. The peachy color is for school holidays. Uh, this sort of ice tealy blue color is public holidays. And then this sort of peachy pink color is for birthdays. So that is what I have got there. And then moving in to the next one. So over here I have my pages read. Um, I haven't honestly read anything for the first sort of six days this year. I've been in a reading slump for sure. Um, I have actually started reading something today though. I started the... Oh, what's it called? Um, it's actually on the next page, is it? Yeah. Um, Curse of the Arctic Star, which is book number one in the Nancy Drew series, because I did read one of the Nancy Drew Christmas books last year. And you can totally read them out of order. You don't have to read them in order. So I decided I actually enjoyed the Christmas book that I read last year for Christmas, and that was book 18. So I decided to um, start that series. So I started book one today and I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm listening to it on audio because I really like the narrator um, for this audio book. So that is where I'm going to be putting in my pages for each day that I've read. And then moving on to this page. So January obviously started on a Friday so I only did a half page for that week. I didn't need to include the rest of the week because that was in last year. Um, so I've got birthday candles as a theme and birthday balloons and then like the little banner and then I just have the purple, pink and blue theme carried on. Um, and then this is the next week and this is kind of how I will set my stuff up for the rest of the year. Now I haven't finished setting this up. I'm still in the process of doing that as you can see. Um, but yeah, so this is what I'm using for my reading journal this year. So there's that one. Okay, moving on to the next one. I am using this here. This is actually an 18 month classic size dashboard layout happy planner. I had to take six months out of this though because it started last year and I already had a planner for last year. It drives me nuts 18 month planners but the 12 month planners were not available here in Australia at the time because Happy Planner didn't allow Australian suppliers to get any. Um, Happy Planner has honestly sucked since the new owners have taken over. But I got my hands on this. Um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted to begin with. I, like I like it, I do, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. Um, but because of the whole issue of Happy Planner not allowing Australian suppliers or actually for any, for that matter, any supplier outside of the US to actually get their full releases, um, I chose this one out of necessity. I really liked the florals though of this kind. So I do like the planner, but it just wasn't my first choice. Um, so it just says Just Bloom on the front. And then this is it here. So like I said, I did take six months out of this. You've got your perpetual calendar in here. And um, let me just flip through. And then because I have, um, I took six months out of this, I've got like a July section here I need to glue together. I just haven't done that yet. So it starts off like this. I have started putting things in for my monthly. Um, I use this kind of like slash planning slash memory keeping in the monthly section um, of my happy planner and then this is your weekly so this is this week today is here as you can see I've got very simple sort of way of doing things I do decorate sometimes more just depends on how I feel but this is how I've decorated this week I may add more decorations as I go I may not it is what it is so I'll show you a blank section but this is basically what the dashboard looks like um, the layout here is actually a little bit different to 
the dashboard layout that I had last year because the errands section was here and this small bit here and then the to buy was here but the to buy went all the way down to here and then the important section was only a small square here so they've changed up that little bit there and then here said dinners where it no longer does in this one so I can I still use it as dinners though um but that's the layout and I'll show you the dividers I'll just flip through so you've got just bloom for February um March I really like March's divider April May June July this is really pretty as well August September October November and I really like the um this one and then December which I also really like the December layout because it's very Christmassy and then that is it you guys so that is that on to my next planner. Um, sorry, my computer's gone crazy there. Okay, I'm actually using um, an old planner. So this was actually, let me see if I can. This was actually from 2019. It was a seasonal one from then. I bought it and then never ended up using it because I ended up using the bigger version of this. Um, and so I didn't waste this. I didn't use it last year either in 2020. So I decided to use it this year and I just redated it um, and flipped the cover over so I have the lemon cover on it. And I redated it and I'm actually using this as my um, finance planner this year. So I'll show you what I have done. Don't mind the washi tape. When I cut washi to use in my planner but then decide not to use it, I stick it on here so that way I don't waste it because I can use it later. So um, in here, don't worry about that. I just, it's because it's the title pages on the other side, so I've just left that there. Um, I printed some stickers um, that I bought off of Etsy and I've just put them on blank dotted um, grid paper from Happy Planner in my planner. So this here is my debt tracker. So I've got debts here um, and I've left the other side blank so I can continue on. Um, this is my savings section um, for four weeks in January. So there'll be like one of these sets up at every month um, for each month basically. Um, so in here I just have like I said my savings. So basically like my my sinking fund. So I've got a savings account, a house account, kids, uh, Christmas holidays and birthdays. Now, I don't actually have a bank account for each one of these. I do have a sub account and I just put all the money into one account. But then in here, I keep track of like how much is for each section, if that makes sense. So I do have savings um, already. Um, I haven't started saving for a house yet, but I am going to this year. So that's why I've got that there. Um, I get for a kid, um, we don't have kids, but in the future we plan on having them. So we are going to start saving for that. Christmas for me, I do spend a fair bit of money at Christmas time. Um, you know, because for me, Christmas is my favorite thing. So every year I do try and buy more pieces for my decorations and everything like that, that I will have for the rest of my life. I like to spend money on good quality pieces. So they're often more expensive because I decided a few years ago that I didn't want like cheap crappy um, like decorations anymore. I wanted good stuff that will be in my, my family for the rest of my life. And then I can pass down to my kids. And then holidays is like um, Easter, Halloween, Valentine's Day, that type of thing. I do like to decorate minimally for those things. Um, so I like to have money for that. And then obviously birthdays. So there's that. Um, then I have check-in. So I have sinking funds um, and then extra savings payments. So if I make any extra payments through each week, I can put it through there. And then I have my check-in for my pays. So I get paid weekly, so this is paycheck one, and then vice versa, I can put it in. So I have like my income, 
um, my expenses. This is not all of my expenses. This is just um, like, uh, what do you call it? I'll think of it in a second. My expenses for that week. So I don't include monthly expenses or anything like that. It, whatever that monthly expense falls on the week is the week it'll be in. But this week there is that basically. Um, and then on that side, I still continue in with my paycheck. So then we go into actual monthlies. So January, I have set up like this. So I have in the monthly view, all of my bills, if anything else pops up that I am not aware of, like when I first set this up, because I set this up at the beginning of every month, um, throughout the month, sometimes things pop up, um, then I can add it in. For instance, um, I don't have my internet bill on here yet because I didn't know when that would come out because it's a different date every month. So I found out yesterday it comes out on the 18th so I can add that in there. I just haven't done that yet. I also yesterday got an email saying that I have a water bill due on the 1st of February so I can add that in as well. Um, water is the only bill that I actually do split up. Um into like for instance my water bill is due on the 1st of February so I have four weeks to save for the bill um so I divide it by four weeks so I put money aside each week based on that so there's that and then um I've got to glue these two pages together I just haven't done that yet but here uh so this is basically what a week looks like. It's not going to be super decorative or anything like that. This is just basically how I'm going to do things. Um, so I have, this is week one in January. Um, mo like most often what I'm going to do is kind of split it into the three sections. So the top section will be for bills due. So like this week I had like these few bills here. Most of my bills generally are due at the end of the weeks just how most of them fall. And then this section here will be like to-do lists. Um, I haven't fully finished filling this stuff in yet. I've got to go back in there and do that. And then the bottom section is my spending tracker. So I write down each day what I've spent. And then I highlight things so I can color code. So I know like, for instance, pink means they were unnecessary purchases. And I could have saved that money if I had have just been prepared and not been lazy. So I can see that I was lazy here and I didn't buy myself enough like work lunches and things like that. So yeah, but that's basically what it's going to be. I haven't set anything else up in here. And like I said, this is an old planner from 20. Don't worry about that. I am going to change that. It was glued. I had to like shift some stuff around. Don't worry about the tops there either. Like here where it says August, September, I just have to put a sticker over that for um, January. That will change as well. Um, so then we've got February. And this is where I mean I've got to glue something over here because that says 2020. Um, but yeah, so you get the, you get the, the point though. So um, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking an old planner that otherwise wouldn't have been used and I am reusing it. So there's that one. And then the very last planner I'm actually going to be using is this one. Um, I actually really like this planner. At first I wasn't sure about it, but then when I got it, I actually love it. The one thing though I do hate about this planner though was it was um, an 18 month planner. Again, I don't need an 18 month planner. I already have planners set out for each year. Just make them 12 months for crying out loud. Um, so I had to take six months out of this, which annoyed me. One thing I will say is because we have to import everything here in Australia, things like this happen. Um, so the lamination is actually coming apart on the edge here. I don't know if my laminator is big enough to handle that, so I don't know if I can fix that or not. I'll try, but I don't know. But this is what it looks like. So this is a big happy planner. I actually prefer big happy planners. I think the size is so perfect. And this is actually going to be my memory planner. Um, so 
it's got the 2020 and then the 2021 calendars in it. Then it's got the perpetual calendars, which I will, you know, I put birthdays and anniversaries and all that sort of stuff in there. And then um, this page has to be glued together. I just haven't done it yet because remember I took out six months. So starting in January, this is January's currently page and then January. And then I've set up the month. And in the, this month view, I actually use it as a memory keeper. And I just find one little like, you know, happy moment in each day and write it in here. Um, except for the days like I put, you know, these things. Because for instance, in the moment I want to, I choose to, um, what do you call it? The record for that day is it's New Year. So I put a sticker there. The moment I choose to record for this day on the 27th is back to school. <laughs> so yeah, so there's that. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. It is a vertical, which I love. I find this size is so much easier for me to do memory planning. Memory planning is so much better in a big eye feel because last year I did actually memory plan in a classic and I just feel like I didn't have enough space for a lot of the weeks. Um, so this is like just so much better for me. And then I really like the fact that it has weekly highlights on the sidebar. So I can put some weekly highlights in there and then, yeah. So this is not super, like it's not really seasonal or anything like that. But this is just what it looks like. I'll show you the, the tabs. I really like that one. I really like the floral ones too. They're so pretty. This is the Squad Goals or Squad Girls. Um, Squad Goals uh, line. This is really pretty. It's one of my favorites. It's quite simple but still pretty. The crafty one. What's this one. this one and then this one so yeah so that is it you guys that's basically everything that I will be using planner wise for this year so I have the squad goals big vertical planner I have a reused classic seasonal planner in vertical I have the Just Bloom classic size dashboard planner and my bullet journal. So these are the three planners that I am going to be using um, for this year. I am debating on whether or not to do plan with me videos. I might actually do that because I do enjoy watching them and I might even do plan with me in my memory planner. We'll see. Depending on how personal of a memory that I'm recording, I might do that. But yeah, so that's kind of everything you guys I wanted to share with you um, for what I am actually going to be using this 2021 planner wise. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and let me know what you guys are using for planners this year. Or oh, are you doing a reading journal? I do not see many reading journal videos on YouTube. So I would love, love, love to see if you guys do what I do or do you have a reading journal but maybe you don't use a bullet journal. Maybe you use something else. I don't know. It'd be um, just like really cool to see what other people um, use for reading journals. So yeah. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later. Bye!